this is really a challenge to speak after Jimmy, and I'm not sure how we can possibly make that, but we try our best, right? Um, to be honest, I'm really, really surprised to be here now half a day, and I haven't seen the VUCA coming up yet. So it seems we are the ones who have to introduce you to it. VUCA. Yeah, it's VUCA. <laughs> VUCA time. VUCA means we are in a time which are volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And this is what companies are dealing with right now. And we need to find answers to deal with these challenges. And it's been caused a lot by digitalization. Right. So digitalization comes with that. And digitalization means that, well, almost or really every company is a software company, although the company might not know it yet. And because in software, Agile is a big thing, people try to use the Agile stuff and put it onto all companies. So the request for company-wide agility is there. Right. And company-wide agility is something different than solving the problem of scaling Agile. There, there are two different challenges. One is dealing with VUCA. The other is the companies are becoming more and more digital. And so, gee, if that's the case, then all the cool things that the IT people have been doing must apply to the whole thing, right? Right. Well, so there's that's, some theory missing. Right. So yeah. that's, that's maybe one idea. So you, you probably all know, and if not, it doesn't matter. The first four statements, well, I say it doesn't matter because we said we don't want to use those whatever terms and say this is the only thing you should use. So the first four statements, they are from the Agile Manifesto and they are kind of the, yeah, the, the value system for implementing Agile. Now, they, they have software in it. And if we talk about company-wide agility and companies really addressing the, the VUCA challenge, something else has, happen has happened. We can't always have software everywhere. So we've got to have a different uh, statement. That's true. And if we would use just those values all over again, which might also mean we use Scrum, Kanban, whatever, everywhere, this well, and I see this, or we both see that. So what's happening then is that you see that people in different fields are using, for example, daily scrums or having Kanban boards. Uh, but if the board level is using a daily scrum, that doesn't make them agile. So we need to find different answers. Well, we could just take all the chairs out of the boardroom and then they'd have to stand up. <laughs> that would be agile, wouldn't it? Well, maybe it opens up something to, for them, yeah. but um, definitely it's not the only thing that's needed in order to become agile or really implementing company-wide agility. So what we did was we were looking at those values from the manifesto and looked at what the, do they mean if they would be applied company-wide. <laughs> Any company, big, right. small, right? What, how, what, how, what's universally applicable? Right, and so what we came up with uh, deriving that is self-organization, transparency, constant customer focus, and continuous learning are like the key values that have to be in place for addressing the VUCA challenge to be able to live in a, or yeah, survive and maybe thrive the digital disruption and therefore implementing agility company-wide. Where's the theory? Well, there is a lot out there. Oh, goodness. There is really a lot out there, and we started looking into this. Um, and, well, we tell you this is not everything, right? So we, it's, as we went and were looking what's out there, we realized there's other stuff popping up all the time. So it's not a complete list, but it's just our attempt. So we said, what can we add to, these, the, to Agile and everything we know to make a more complete theory about how you bring uh, uh, or uh, complete company-wide Agile as a, as a concept? Mm -hmm. And so one thing that we decided we don't want to do is looking at a specific implementation and saying, well, if it worked there, probably it works everywhere. So and, um, just uh, to provide you one example, a thing that 
we see a lot, and also I heard the terms here today, is, for example, the Spotify model. And I have already problems saying it this way because there is, I'm sorry, really, there is no such thing as a Spotify model. It doesn't exist. They even say, don't copy us. Yeah, right. So Spotify reports on what they are doing at a given moment, but after they are done with, their, with the talking, this thing has changed. So if you copy anything from Spotify, then what you need to do is reflect and adapt. So reflect what's going on or inspect what's going on and then adapt and change. So the change is the thing that Spotify is doing, but not the squats and tribes. So that's not the model because that's not there. So right. that would be, we didn't want to take specific implementations. And we didn't want to be too broad either, like Theory U. I don't know of any company that is running by Theory U. Yeah, so not a, like a philosophies or anything like that, that's maybe not concrete enough to, to really do something with it. However... So it was a little bit like Goldilocks maybe. It's yeah. not too specific, not too broad. What is it that we look for? And we went over to the right-hand side. We said, well, Agile, of course, all those, those tools that Agile has. But then we looked at beyond budgeting. How many people are familiar with beyond budgeting? Excellent. Ah, excellent. This is unusual. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very great. Um, and we looked at something called sociocracy. How many people have heard of sociocracy? See amazing. This? Yeah, amazing. That's amazing. That's beginning to be heard. Yeah. yeah. Right. And then oh, we went we one back? slide. Let's go back one. Sure. And then we looked at things like World Cafe or Appreciative Inquiry. But then we looked at open space. And there actually are companies that are running with open space. And we said, aha, we'll grab that. Because we, we haven't heard of companies, for example, doing World Cafe as their organizational model, right? But open space we saw. And, and we went for the primary ones. So like Beta Codex is a spin-off of Beyond Budgeting and Holacracy is a spin-off of Sociocracy. And so we went with the core. And so this gave us beyond um, the Bossa Nova made out of Beyond Budgeting, Open Space, Sociocracy, and Agile. And, um, based on the thing that if you think of what does it mean for a company to be agile, and agile, as we heard today already, lowercase a, right? So meaning flexible, adaptive, responsive, all of that. Then if you are in finance, you would say, well, as long as we have annual budgets, we will never be able to be agile in that sense because the budgets are fixed. We cannot adapt to any other market needs. And so Beyond Budgeting provides that by, well, saying that if you do your budget, ensure that it's not one number, it's not one thing, you need to split it out into having, like, what's your target, what's the forecast, and on the other hand, when we saw that was Jimmy already also in the 10 principles, guidelines, recommendations, no matter how it was called, dynamic resource allocation. So that's the third thing. And it has to be spread out. It's not one thing. Yeah, and sociocracy means rule by the socios rather than the, the demos, which is the general mass of people. And so it's like democracy made for organizations. And that means feedback loops. They, they're really good in making those, what was it that we heard about the, the, the grumpy bastards bringing them. <laughs> putting, institutionalizing their voices. Yeah, and then there's open space, which is mainly based on invitation that everyone can bring up an idea, and so therefore embedding innovation in the company. So everyone in the company can bring up an idea, and if there are enough people who think that's a good idea, if we do that, then this is a done deal, so it will be happening. But if nobody's following that idea, meaning nobody has the passion around that, except for this one person, then it will not be happening because it doesn't have enough support. So it's inviting people to suggest ideas and follow their passion. So as we did our research, we realized we had a kind of a river, a river of development formed from several streams of development. And we liked the idea of dancing. And we haven't heard about people being, maybe being agile, but not dancing. Dancing needs to be a really important part of bringing Agile company-wide. And so you, 
we came up with the bossa nova. And bossa nova actually is Portuguese. And, and on the one hand, what it means is it's a style of music. It's a fusion of samba and jazz. And this way, we feel like what we are doing is also a fusion of different streams. Then it is an intricate dance, which... Which is, is like if you've ever danced, you know that you're following the music, but you actually influence the people playing the music if you're really into it. And that dance with each other is an essential ingredient for things like big strategies and all that. It's like the feeling of dancing together. Right, and directly translated, it means new trend, new wave. However, so these four streams, they define those four values that we have uh, defined before, like the customer, constant customer focus, continuous learning, transparency, and self-organization. But they also provide us a different perspective on the organizational chart. So that would be a classic chart. Right, so here's the classic chart. We have the shareholders and they, they, what they do rolls down to the production and the support service teams and then they give some, uh, some kind of service to the customer. But notice that we have the lower arrow drawn more lightly. The customer talking back is, is, tends to be ignored, particularly if you've been told by the shareholders that we have to maximize quarterly profits and we're not going to make that investment in the customers this month because. And so there's an inherent conflict in the traditional structure. And well, that's probably also why you're all here because business agility puts the customer in the center at the core of what we are doing. Does, does the product owners rule your company? <laughs> well, not. product owners as a function, by the way, not as like a specific role. Okay. So, our new perspective on the organizational chart is this one. We, if this is a new way of thinking, how are we organized? And in each case, you have a hierarchy. We just looked at the board hierarchy. And if you're bringing like sociocracy into it, you build a structure that forces feedback going back up, which brings the customer voice in. You can even put customers directly on your board, but the routine way is to bring it th from the customers through the baristas to the, the, sh the shareholders. We took away the support service teams and said they're actually representing the controls, the hierarchy that comes from budgeting, from the regulations about how you deal with people, and they've got their own hierarchy. If you have ever dealt with one of those evil chief financial officers, then you know they're, they're like, they're, they're like, they have a lot of power over in the way they operate. So how do we get that back so that they are responsive? That's beyond budgeting. And then inspiration. How many people think of inspiration as a hierarchy? Passion is a hierarchy. Does anybody know what the spirit of your company is? What's the spirit of Target? We heard of earlier, what's the spirit of Boeing aircraft? And that spirit and the, 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 the subsections of that spirit and the values that are behind that form a kind of hierarchy. And I know of, of places where the values can be more important than the customer. So how do you speak back to that structure? How do you modify your spirit? That's its own hierarchy. Well, and in the center, we have those value, what, what's called a value center that also comes from beyond budgeting. So cross-functional teams delivering actually the value of whatever the value you are providing with your company. So everything is like focusing on what we want to do, what we want to deliver to the customer. But with the art and spirit, we also have the, the possibility of the put in the innovation. So again, what open space mainly does for us. So bringing in new ideas and um, working on those. How do we put this into practice? Well, that's a good question. Does anybody know what you do when you have a complex situation? What's that? Experiment? Yeah, yeah. experiment. OK. So, exactly. So we can't get it, stand up here and say, this is how you do it, because you're all dealing with complex situations. There's no recipe or formula. So what do you do? You experiment. You probe you, and to try to make sense out of what the situation is and then go from there. That's, that's in many ways the essence of the agile approach. 
there's, go ahead. No. Yeah. So, so think about your situation. Reflection, time to sit and think is the beginning of that process. And then start uh, looking at what probes could we do. We, in, in the, the work we've done, we offer a whole bunch of sample probes. But how do you, how do you actually uh, say, what's, this is our situation, what, how do we make sense out of it? Develop an experiment, and then of course learn from that. This thing over on the left, publish to your peers, is something that's missing from many companies. If you have this unit over here learning something, there's no organized way that, like they do in science to learn about that. I'm uh, excited to hear about the Innovation Institute possibility of a journal where we could be the publishing this. Business kind of Agility thing. Institute? Bus right, business yeah. Agility Institute. Mm -hmm, right. um, and so the formula for what you do with a four-part hierarchy and trying to synthesize these streams of development is to start experimenting, probing and experimenting with your situation. So and a sample probe could, can look like this. For example, when, when we are saying now here that customer focus is, at the, is the focal point of business agility, then probably if we do performance evaluations, they have to reflect that idea. And the question is, well, actually my question for that one is more, do we really mean it? Or do we just say, of course, the customer is in, at the core of our business? So the, the general way how we set up all the probes is we provide some context, then we have a hypothesis, and there it starts already if you go with that or not, and if it makes sense for you or not, and then an experiment with it, and, for, and pre and post measures. And if you see this is really providing the change for you, the one you want to see, then you keep going and um, keep experimenting with that. An, an example in this case, very simple, is if you had three or four units, divide them in two, do an A-B test, have one set of units develop their own performance evaluations, and the other ones keep the standard company ones. And what happens? Do you have a higher customer focus? Do you have more satisfied customers? You can measure that. And if you do, then maybe you uh, start seeing if more units benefit by developing their own performance evaluation criteria. And so in this way, we, as, as John said before already, we have provided um, many different probes in different areas. So the key areas that we found was, well, you might think, why isn't there anything for changing the culture? Well, culture changes only if behavior and habits change, and especially in like the three areas that characterize a company, which is the structure, the strategy, and the processes that are um, implemented there. And so we've provided different probes for all these areas, um, which help to, yeah, roll out, if you will, company-wide agility. And, um, well, this one says now red, right? But we have maybe two minutes or one, one minute, minute left, okay. okay? Let's go to the last slide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> which is good. So this is our book, which is just published. So we published it for this conference, and we are really proud of it that we made it on time. And um, it's also in the reading room, so you can uh, have a look at it. And we brought a few copies with us. So and that's The right. book has so, lots of examples of where people have well, actually been true. carrying this out, lots of expert boxes. So By different thing. people you might know, like... Um, Diana Larson, Chess Humble, I don't know. Our goal is to get this, Spotify. Get this additional uh, or, or supplemented uh, framework theory beyond Agile. Getting the synthesis of all the streams of development together is what we hope that we can um, interest you in. Okay. So thank you very much.